Hello beautiful people, my name is Vendi and today I'm bringing you a very short, quick video by showing you my winter book haul. Now I know what you might be thinking, like, hey Vendi, isn't it a little bit early for you to be having your first book haul of the decade considering the whole point of your reading this year was to cut down on the books you own and aren't you on a book buying ban and blah 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 and you're right about like 90% of that. but. One, my book buying ban did not go into effect until the 1st of the year, so January 1st, 2020. So any books that I bought before then are technically, technically fair game here. And two, as is the case with most of the books that I'm going to show you, I actually didn't purchase most of them. I received them either as gifts or via giveaways or through other circumstances that were kind of similar. So without further ado, let me show you these books. Thank the lovely souls who gave them to me and just get you guys hyped up for what I'm going to be reading throughout this year because all of these are on my TBR now and if I'm going to get it down to zero, I do have to read them. <sighs> the stack is just so big. Let's get started. The first book that I have to show you is my actual current read um, and it was sent to me by Jimmy Patterson Books and it is Sword in the Stars, the sequel to Once and Future by Corey McCarthy and Amy Rose Capetta. So Sword in the Stars is the conclusion of the duology following Ari, the 42nd reincarnation of King Arthur. Ari and her merry band of rainbow knights are born in a time when the entire galaxy is basically conquered by these mega corporations. And Ari manages to live a sort of low key, pretty underground life until one day Mercer, the company, discovers her, decides to sort of start hunting her and during these shenanigans, she figures out that she's the 42nd reincarnation of Arthur and has to be set on the Arthurian legend cycle, and the story spins from there. Since Sword in the Stars is a direct sequel, so I can't really tell you what happens here without spoiling book one, just know that it continues to follow our delightfully diverse, uh, queer cast of characters, and I love them so much. I cannot wait for this book to come out in April of 2020, that's in just a few months guys, you can start pre-orders now, um, so that you guys can read the story and share the enthusiasm that I have for it because uh, it's, it's going to be one of my favorites of the year, I can already tell. The next book I actually won in a Goodreads giveaway, yes people actually do win those things, and that is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This book follows Pip, a high school senior in a very small town who chooses to uh, use a hometown tragedy as the subject of her senior thesis for graduation. Five years prior, a super popular high school senior named Andy was killed by her boyfriend Sal who committed suicide directly after. The tragedy still haunts the small town and Pip knows this when she begins her digging into the story, but as she continues like looking at the facts of these things, not quite everything begins to add up and she realizes maybe Sal was innocent all along. I still haven't read this book, but I plan to very, very soon as it comes out this month, February of 2020. I'm terrible at keeping up with my arcs, guys, but I'm super, super excited to actually read this. It reminds me very much of the podcast serial, specifically the first season, and I just love that sort of true crime thing. So if this book is anything like that, I'm sure to enjoy it. The next three books I'm going to show you were sent to me by author L.L. McKinney, um, and they are A Blade So Black, its sequel, A Dream So Dark, and an ARC copy of Tessa Grattan's Strange Grace, which was out, I think, in 2016? Nope, uh, it was on sale in late 2018. Time isn't real. So starting off, since she is the person who sent the books to me, and I feel it would be remiss not to talk about these books, especially since I loved A Blade So Black when I read it last year, um, I'm gonna talk about it and its sequel first. As per usual, can't say much about this one without spoiling this one, so this is going to be our focus uh, for the duration of my talking about these books. So the essential idea of A Blade So Black is what if Buffy Summers was the one who fell down the rabbit hole um, and entered the world of Wonderland, and it delivers a thousand percent. So A Blade So Black follows Alice, who you can see beautifully on this cover, um, a girl who realizes that she has the power to slay the monsters and the nightmares that come from people's imaginations and manifest themselves physically into this world after the trauma of her father's passing. She's taken under the wing of Hatta, a Wonderland exile living on Earth, in Atlanta specifically, um, to be trained up and taught to harness these powers and to keep the mortal worlds safe. But one day Hatta is poisoned by something not quite of this world and Alice, who is still amidst her training, needs to find out what's going on or else she's going to lose a mentor, a teacher, a friend, and perhaps something more. 
However, she has to do this on top of balancing her home life, uh, her friend life, and high school, which already is a pretty heavy load to bear for a young teen. I just love this book so, so, so dearly. Uh, Elle's Alice is perhaps my favorite version of her I've ever read. She just takes so much agency and she's such a teen girl in the best way possible. Like this is excellent, excellent YA. She doesn't shy away from addressing her trauma and the way that it's shaped her life. And I absolutely find the way that she begins to embrace her power and who she is and sort of realize that she's full of all this muchness that just makes her special and that that's not a thing to hide from. Um, it just, it, it warms my heart and I absolutely love this series and I think you guys should all read it. And the last book of that bunch that I was sent, um, again, was Strange Grace by Tessa Gratton, which is out now in actual hardcover and probably paperback copy for you to purchase if it sounds interesting to you. I don't know very much about this book, but there's a sort of tagline for it that seems very intriguing. Once a witch made a pact with the devil. The story says they loved each other, but can the story be trusted at all? The basic premise is a village made a pact with the devil long ago that they would be prosperous as long as every time a thing called the slaughter moon rises, they would sacrifice a young man to him to sort of just keep him sated and keep their pact fresh and happening. But when the slaughter moon rises early, three young folks, a witch named Merwin, an expected saint, which I can only imagine means that he was the one that they were going to slaughter, uh, a boy named Rune, and a restless outcast named Arthur have to come together and figure out what the heck they're going to do to keep themselves safe. That is all I know about this book. That's all I want to know about this book because I have a feeling that the twists and turns are going to keep me captivated from start to finish. The next couple of books I'm going to show you, I'm just absolutely floored to have received them and I received them from a booktube friend. Her name is Katie. You can find her at a channel, A Sea of Tomes, and I'll have her linked in the description box below for you to do just that. And Katie's a little bit wild and she ended up sending me the entire Farseer trilogy and book one, The Ship of Magic of the Live Ship Traders trilogy, I think? Maybe quartet. Um, regardless, all of the books are part of Robin Hobb's Realm of the Elderling series. The Farseer trilogy, beginning with Assassin's Apprentice, follows a young bastard named Fitz, who is the son of the former king in waiting of the six duchies. Fitz is in a weird, unique position where he both sort of straddles like the court intrigue and um, the, the privilege of the royal world that he's sort of part of by blood and by choice. But at the same time, he is an outcast of this world as well because of the nature of his birth. In order to keep himself safe, because the most useful bastard is a dead bastard in this world, Fitz begins to take on the trade of being a royal assassin. The Farseer trilogy follows him in his childhood and his early years, I think possibly to his late teens, maybe early 20s by the time of Assassin's Quest, which is book three that I'm showing you right now. Um, and it's, it's just absolutely wild. Um, there's a bunch of political intrigue, and I, it's, it's the foundation of the Realm of the Elderlings, which is just an absolute saga that I'm buddy reading with Katie right now and loving every second of it. It is a very heavy series um, thematically, and we are taking breaks as needed with that because sometimes the mental health just says, no, stop. Um, but I'm loving it very, very much, and I cannot wait to continue, and I'm just so fucking grateful to Katie for sending these books my way. They are phenomenal, and I cannot wait to continue reading them with her and just loving this series every step of the way. Also, they're just beautiful. So that's really it for the Farseer trilogy. Um, the other thing Katie sent me for Christmas specifically was book one of the Live Ship Traders. Like I said, this is Ship of Magic. I don't know nearly as much about this one, but it is um, one that I'm very excited to read because pirates and pirate ships. I know it follows a girl named Althea whose father has a live ship and live ship is a boat made out of wild wood, which is this sentient wood. Um, and as the ship is about to wake up and her father is dying, Althea finds out that the ship that she thought was gonna be hers her whole life is signed away, not to her, but to her shitty brother-in-law. And the story kind of goes from there. I'm very, very excited to finish Farseer and get to this and then continue with the realm of the Elderlings overall. The next book that I wanna share with you is one of my most anticipated reads. In fact, I plan on reading it this month because it's just, it looks so good. Um, and it's Fairy Tales for Lost Children by Dirie Osman. 
This was sent to me by the lovely Noria from the channel Noria Reads, who I'll also have linked in the description box below, as will be the case for the next couple of books that I show you. This little book is a collection of short stories, obviously written by Diria Osman. It's sort of mixed media in that there is art and like visual art and poetry inside of it as well, and it tells the story of gay, lesbian, and otherwise queer people in Somalia. The stories sort of paint a wider picture of Somali culture and how that ties into a queer identity, and I think it's going to be absolutely stunning. It was one of Noria's favorite books. The next book was sent to me by my friend Adelaide, who you might know from our previous videos, um, the Snape Rant and the Makeup and Books tag, and it is The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. As you can tell by the cover and by the beautiful foiled uh, naked hardback that you can see here. Wow, it's, it's truly gorgeous. This is the Owl Crate Exclusive Edition. And as an Owl Crate book, it came with a bunch of other goodies, and I'll show you the clip of those things right here uh, because it's really stunning stuff. This Owl Crate box also came with obviously the exclusive Owl Crate pin. It looks like it is a castle covered in vines. It came with a coloring book and some colored pencils, which I think is just super fun because lately when I've been listening to audiobooks, I've had to do something with my hands as well to sort of help chill me out. And I think that this will be a wonderful addition to my audiobook reading time. We also have this little book protector sleeve. Got some Caraval Rose earmuffs. A Mount Ruin candle that smells absolutely, absolutely divine. And in here we have a hand warmer. But back to the book, um, I'm obviously thriving for the time that is happening in publishing right now full of all of these different retellings of Arthurian legend. This is, as you could probably tell by the title and the images on the cover, basically the same thing, but from the point of view of Guinevere. So at the behest of the wizard Merlin, King Arthur is to wed a stranger, a princess named Guinevere, who is really here to sort of act as the sword catcher. In case something bad is going to happen to the once and future king, Guinevere can be there to sort of take the fall and have the bad thing happen to her instead. Merlin's not that great a guy. Um, but there is a little bit of a catch, and the catch is that Guinevere is not really Guinevere. She is a changeling girl who is basically putting everything on the line to make sure that Camelot is kept safe. As is to be expected with any Arthurian legend retelling, there's a whole lot of court intrigue and Guinevere must balance all of that, the, the world of the old and the idyllic world of the new that Camelot is supposed to um, inspire and cultivate, all the while realizing that it takes more than idealism to make a dream like this succeed. I'm very excited to read Guinevere's story and to hopefully, hopefully love it and continue with this trilogy as Christian White writes it because as you know about me, I'm an absolute slut for Arthurian legend. Love it so, so, so much. Also heard that this is queer. So if I could have two queer King Arthur retellings, like kind of in a row, back to back on my reading list, it's just, I'm, I'm really thriving in 2020, guys. Like it's, it looked at me and said, you know what, now is your time. And boy, oh boy, it really is. And the next to last book that I want to show you was sent to me by my dear friend Emma from the channel Emma Novella, who again I'll have linked in the description box below. And it is The Starless Sea, the sophomore novel of booktube darling Aaron Morgenstern. I could not make heads or tails of the synopsis for this book on Goodreads, and none of my favorite reviewers on this platform are really able to tell me sort of like the plot of this book. However, it's an Aaron Morgenstern book so I can sort of draw on my knowledge of the Night Circus um, to kind of give me an idea of what this book is going to be like, if not what it's going to be about. I have a feeling it's going to be full of purple prose, which isn't a negative thing when I say it. Um, it it's a thing I really like. I like lavish, lush writing. It's going to be a story that uh, focuses more on character than plot and um, sort of really digs into the heart of a character um, and tests their mettle in a way that you're not expecting. It's gonna be magical, but in a quiet way, not in a flashy, very out there sort of sense. Look at me talking like I know what this book is gonna be about. It might not be about any of those things, but that is sort of the Aaron Morgenstern brand in my mind. So hopefully, hopefully that's what the Starless Seal will give me. Um, and if it's not what it gives me, I hope I like it anyway. I'm very confident that I will. I love Aaron Morgenstern's writing. Um, thank you so much, Emma, for sending me this novel because it's one I've been dying to read basically since the moment it was announced. Um, and so now I can. There we go. So we can see the other side of this as well. 
Um, and the final book that I have to show you is actually one I bought myself, but before my book buying ban was truly put in place. Um, and it is going to serve another goal of mine, which is the making writing a big priority um, in 2020 and the 2020s as a whole. Um, and that is The Anatomy of Story by John Truby. This is a nonfiction book um, about the art of writing screenplays, which can be extrapolated um, into being a book about crafting story where there is basically no fat left to trim, um, which is my favorite type of story to read personally. My favorite author, perhaps of all time, Susan Dennard, highly recommends this book as a craft like 2.0 book. And I feel that I'm far past the 1.0 stages in my writing life and would like to brush up on my craft instead of just relying on basically self-teaching for my writing. I would like to take it to the next level because when you're pursuing publication, that's what you got to do. And that's what your girl is going to be doing this year. Fingers crossed. Oh, I love my manuscript so much. But that is it for this short and sweet video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, leave me a thumbs up. And if you like me, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. I post bookish content every weekend, though that schedule is pending change now that I have a new job. Um, but I would love for you to become part of my bookish family regardless and tune in when I post something new. Comment down below uh, if you have an opinion on which one of these books I should read first. Obviously I'm finishing up uh, Sword in the Stars first, but after that, who knows when I'll get to each of these lovely things. And I'd love to chat with you guys in the comments, but until then, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one very, very soon. Goodbye.